Thank you, Madam Vice President, and thank you, Dr. Babaker, for your frank reporting. The United States continues to condemn the Eritrean government's treatment of its citizens, including reports of torture, arbitrary detention, and other abuses against those exercising freedoms of expression and religion or belief. We also condemn Eritrea's indefinite national service system and its unlawful recruitment and use of child soldiers. We are alarmed by recent reports that Eritrea has forcibly repatriated Eritrean refugees from Sudan. We call on the Eritrean government to introduce much needed national reforms to end these unlawful and abhorrent practices. The United States urges Eritrea to ensure that all remaining troops leave northern Ethiopia and refrain from any attacks on civilians. We remain gravely concerned by the atrocity crimes that were committed by members of the Eritrean Defense Forces during the conflict in northern Ethiopia, which include war crimes and crimes against humanity. It is imperative to hold those responsible for such crimes to account. I thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Venezuela. Gracias, señor. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Once again, we need to address a hostile report on an impartialized account and un with unfounded accusations, as we have seen from this rapporteur in 2012. Venezuela does not support individualized items on countries of the South. These undermine the principles of sovereignty and non-interference in the affairs of the state as enshrined in the UN Charter. Eritrea has actively cooperated with this Council and its mechanisms and the treaty bodies, providing frank and candid information in a timely fashion on the efforts it has taken to protect fundamental freedoms, their achievements and the challenges. We need to afford Eritrea the appropriate support to comply with the recommendations accepted from the UPR, and this is the most appropriate mechanism to address human rights issues on an equal footing between states. We need to halt this mandate that has been imposed that has led to a lost decade without any uh, result other than pilfering the resources that are available. We recommend that this Council should fulfill its mandate to protect and promote human rights across the world through genuine dialogue, and these are the fundamental pillars of its work. I thank you very much, Madam Vice President. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to the UK. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The UK remains deeply concerned about the human rights situation in Eritrea. The policy of indefinite national service is an urgent need of reform. It affects the lives of thousands of Eritreans, particularly the younger generation, and is a key reason why they are leaving the country. We remain similarly concerned about the continuing and repressive use of arbitrary detention practices to hold people in comunicado, including those simply seeking to practice their religion or belief. We also continue to press for full withdrawal of Eritrean troops from Tigray, for the Eritrean government to ensure accountability for human rights violations and abuses committed by its forces during the conflict in Ethiopia, and for them to cooperate fully with any future Ethiopian or international accountability processes. As a member of this Human Rights Council, we urge the Eritrean government to demonstrate its commitment to upholding human rights by implementing the recommendations from its last Universal Periodic Review, and finally, cooperate with the mandate given to the Special Rapporteur by this Council. We would like to ask the Special Rapporteur what specific steps he believes Eritrea can and must take in order to defend the integrity of its membership of this Council. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The DPRK delegation opposes and rejects any practice and attempt of selecting, selective ta targeting of sovereign state and political interference in their internal affairs under the pretext of human rights. We are of the view that any debate based on prejudice and aimed at political objective is not conducive but counterproductive to the genuine promotion and protection of human rights, and therefore such practice should be discontinued. The genuine willingness and preparedness of the government of Eritrea for the promotion and protection of human rights 
and efforts to that end should be duly taken into account and further encouraged. The HRC or HC or OHCHR should avoid application of politicization, selectivity, and double standards in the fields of human rights and encourage the constructive dialogue and cooperation to promote understanding <clears throat> over the different realities and to explore effective ways for the promotion and protection of human rights. I thank you. Gracias. Tiene la palabra, thank you. I give the floor to Djibouti via video. Mr. Rapporteur for his report what? constructive dialogue, my government remains committed to the peace and reconciliation in our region and believes that the commitment and engagement of all can strengthen regional integration and actually impact positively the protection and promotion of human rights as well as the upholding of humanitarian law. My delegation takes note of the paragraph 68 in the report and reaffirms Djibouti government commitment to its international humanitarian obligation regarding the protection and assistance to all refugees, including Eritrean ones in collaboration with the UNHCR. My delegation also takes note of the special rapporteur concern regarding arbitrary detention, enforced disappearances, and ill treatment of detainees as set up in paragraph 44 to 48 of the report. Indeed, my delegation remains deeply concerned by the lack of information on the Djibouti prisoners unaccounted for and held in, com in communicado in Eritrean custody and call on Eritrea to share information on the fate of these prisoners with relevant stakeholders, including the ICRC. Furthermore, the withdrawal of my government communication concerning Djibouti prisoners of war before ACHPR, mentioned in paragraph 26 of the report, reflects our commitment to its tension and reach a mutually acceptable solution on the prisoners. However, this action should in no way be interpreted as our country abandoning its quest to ascertain the face of the Djibouti prisoner of war. The special rapporteur, the OHCR, and the Human Rights Council are encouraged to continue engaging Eritrea in order to promote and protect the human rights of all prisoners detained in the country. And I thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Switzerland. Madam Vice Chair President, Switzerland would like to thank the Special Rapporteur for his report. My country is concerned by the human rights situation in Eritrea and the very volatile situation in the region. Switzerland shares the concerns raised by the Special Rapporteur and related to the urgency to reform the National Mandatory Service of indefinite duration. We're particularly concerned by the consequences of forced conscription, not just for concerned persons, but also for their families, as indicated in the report of the Special Operator. Also, Switzerland would like to urge Eritrea to create an environment that will be favorable for the work of civil society so that it can fully contribute to the sustainable development that is inclusive in the country. The freedom of expression should be respected and protected, as well as the freedom of the press and free access to the Internet. My country is concerned by reports of arbitrary arrests and forced disappearances of journalists and political opponents. My country would like to urge the Eritrean authorities to fully cooperate with the Council and its mechanisms. In this light, Switzerland would like to encourage Eritrea to authorize a visit to the country of the Special Rapporteur and improve access of international organizations, including the ICRC, throughout the country. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to Yemen via video. Madam Vice President, we have taken due note of the report of the Special Rapporteur on, uh, Rapporteur on the Human Rights Situation in Eritrea. We affirm that Human Rights Acts must adopt a, a genuine uh, approach towards cooperation and dialogue with the country concerned while avoiding politicization and selectivity. Reports of special reporters must be based on verifiable uh, information while uh, taking into account the specificities, national specificities of each country. We also affirm the uh, fundamental principles upon which the Human Rights Council was uh, created, and that is cooperation with governments. In this respect, uh, the Eritrean government must be con um, considered uh, or consulted on the form of cooperation with 
that uh, it uh, prefers in cooperating with human rights councils. Despite the challenges and, and uh, difficulties faces uh, the, that the Eritrean government has been, facing, uh, has been facing, it managed to promote and protect human rights. We call upon it to continue these efforts. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to South Sudan. Madam Vice President, my delegation has listened carefully to the report presented by the Special Rapporteur on the human rights situation in Eritrea and would like to underscore that constructive engagement by the human rights mechanism in the consent of the concerned country must be the key to addressing challenges faced in the area of promotion and protection of human rights. South Sudan thanks and appreciates the government of Eritrea for the improvement of the human rights situation in the country and its cooperation with a special reporter on his mandate in the country and commends the government of Eritrea for a great momentous role in combating human rights violations demonstrated in building institutions of accountability and a strong legal framework. We call on the international community to support Eritrea efforts particularly those geared towards strengthening institution of justice, empowerment of women, child rights, and disability. I thank you, Madam Vice President. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Sudan. Thank you, Madam Vice President. We have taken due note of the content of the report uh, of the uh, Special Rapporteur on the human rights situation in Eritrea and uh, the uh, recommendations and observations made therein. We welcome the efforts of Eritrea in social rights and development. The report uh, referred to the improvement of the quality of education and cooperation with uh, United Nations agencies. Madam Vice President, uh, the Sudan has always been committed to its uh, to the protection uh, of refugees and providing support to them despite the challenges we have been facing. We have been also cooperating with uh, refugees concerned international organizations. Uh, refugees from Eritrea have been receiving dignified, and res dignified treatment and respect in the Sudan and for decades we do not agree with the reference made in the report that the, refu the Eritrean refugees live in fear and in hiding places in the Sudan. We affirm that uh, the principles and objectives of this uh, council must be promoted in order to promote and protect uh, human rights uh, apart from politicization and double standards and selectivity. We affirm that the country concerned must uh, uh, um, define its own needs and priorities of technical support uh, uh, as part of it its national sovereignty independent, and independent political decision. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Cuba. Thank you very much, Madam Vice President. Cuba is opposed, was opposed to the resolution that underpins this dialogue that did not enjoy the consensus and it also did not enjoy the support of the country concerns. Dialogue and respectful exchange of views on the basis of the principles of the UN Charter is the most effective way for the promotion and protection of human rights. Now, in opposition to that, the politicization, selectivity, and double standards in dealing with human rights only create obstacles that cannot be surmounted by countries in UN mechanism. We believe that cooperation, respectful dialogue, and the agreement of countries' concerns are crucial principles to ensure that the Council can deal with questions that raise concerns in the international community that may represent challenges for one or many countries in the area of the promotion and protection of human rights. We reiterate our position that the Council should not renounce the possibility of seeking cooperation and constructive dialogue. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to Kenya. Vice President, Kenya takes note of the report of the Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in Eritrea. We welcome the technical support provided, particularly in the promotion of quality and access to education to the Eritrean peoples through the United Nations agencies. 
with respect to the regional stability of bordering countries and the peace process, Kenya hails the efforts already undertaken by the African Union, led by the Joint Committee for the Implementation of the Agreement for Monitoring, Verification and Compliance Mechanisms. In conclusion, we encourage the Government of Eritrea to continue strengthening the administration of justice processes by addressing and implementing the recommendations accepted at CPR process in 2019 for the enjoyment of human rights for its peoples. I thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Ethiopia. Thank you very much, Madam Vice President. We have noted the reports, and I just want to make three brief points. One, we have noted with serious concern the inclusion of issues beyond the scope of this mandate in the report, and including the issues that, has, that are related with the Pretoria Peace Agreement, the situation of refugees hosted by Ethiopia, as well as the peace and security situation in Ethiopia. To this end, I want to underscore the importance of compliance with the mandate as approved by this Council through Resolution AHRC Resolution 50-2. I also want to emphasize the importance of upholding integrity and independence by the mandate holder in his work, in his working methods, in accordance with Council Resolution 1621, as well as the Code of Conduct for Mandate Holders and other relevant resolutions regarding the operation of country-specific mandates. Two, despite our serious concern on the report, I want to take this opportunity to reiterate the open-door policy of the government of Ethiopia and its firm commitment to provide life-saving humanitarian assistance and international protection to people of concern within its jurisdiction, irrespective of the serious funding gaps it's currently faced with. Three, the Council should continue to further strengthen its cooperation with the state concerned in the promotion and pro protection of human rights by complementing its national efforts. I thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to the Russian Federation. Madam Vice President, we find the practice of the politicized consideration by the Council of the situation in Eritrea unacceptable. The creation in the Council of mechanisms that do not enjoy the support of the party concerned will not improve the human rights situation on the ground. I would like to point out that in Eritrea we face a very difficult social economic situation that has a ne negative impact on migration. In these conditions, we take a positive view of the agreements reached between the political leadership of Eritrea and Ethiopia on the gradual withdrawal from Ethiopian territory of Eritrean troops that participated in operations on the restoration of the constitutional order in the Tigray region. In, in this, we continue to believe that the unilateral imposition by the United States of restrictions against a number of Eritrean and Ethiopian public officials as counterproductive. From our part, we continue to provide assistance to Asmara in the step-by-step -step improvement of the social economic situation in the country through the expansion of Russian Eritrean trade in economic links and development of cooperation in educational, humanitarian and other areas. We urge other countries to follow the example shown by the Russian Federation and finally give up the practice of putting external political pressure on Eritrea also through the use of the mechanisms of the Human Rights Council. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, Madam Vice President, the Islamic Republic of Iran expresses its principled opposition to the country's specific mandate that don't support the consent of the concerned countries, and the case of situation of human rights Eritrea is not an exception to it. Granting importance to the peace agreement concluded on 2nd November 2020 and its effects uh, on the situation of human rights in Eritrea. We are of the view that the leadership role of the African Union is very important in the implementation 
implementation and extension of the peace process, especially the role of the Joint Committee for the implementation of the agreement and of monitoring, verification and compliance mechanism that has brought to the fore uh, by the African Union. Most of the point uh, raised by Mr. Special Rapporteur in his report is related to the conflict broke out in November 2020, considering the fact that the uh, realities on the ground has uh, changed and the cessation of hostilities has led to many improvements. We recommended Mr. Special Rapporteur not to repeat the old uh, accusation related to the past years. We also would like to ask the Special Rapporteur about the effect of USMs on the life of Eritrean people. Considering the long-lasting effects of sanction on development of society, we believe that this issue has to be considered in his report. I thank you, Madam Vice President. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Saudi Arabia. Madam Vice President, uh, we have taken note of the report of the Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in Eritrea. We salute the efforts of Eritrea to uh, promote human rights. Uh, uh, Eritrea said in its statement that there are many challenges faced by uh, his country. Here we believe uh, that we must have an open dialogue and cooperation with the concerned country to achieve progress in the field of human rights. Uh, the international community must provide further support to Eritrea in order to protect and promote human rights and achieve uh, uh, accomplishments in uh, Eritrea. We welcome the efforts of Eritrea in the field of human rights. We reiterate that achieving progress in the field of human rights necessitates a constructive dialogue, cooperation with the concerned country, and assistance for capacity building. We reiterate the importance of abiding by international values and standards when discussing human rights. I thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Belarus. Thank you very much, Madam Vice President. We would like to once again highlight the ineffective nature of any country initiatives that are adopted in the Human Rights Council without the agreement of the government of countries concerned. Such initiatives do not change the situation on the ground in any way. Moreover, they undermine the possibility of constructive dialogue and cooperation because they're used as an instrument and tool of pressure and for the resolution by certain countries of their own goals. Against this background, uh, the, any steps to really improve the situation in human rights is becomes more complicated. Belarus is in favor, is constantly against country resolutions and mandates. Cooperation on human rights should be based on the respect of principles of sovereignty and non-interference in internal affairs of countries and support of countries, and should not be based on any forms of accusation. We urge the Council to refrain from putting pressure on countries through the use of ineffective mechanisms and elaborate uh, consensus-based solutions. Thank you. La palabra, Burundi. Thank you. I give the floor to Burundi. Thank you very much, Madam Vice President. On the basis of principle, Burundi does not support specific mandates that do not enjoy the agreement and support of the country concerned. Such mandates violate the principles of UN, the UN Charter and are counterproductive. Questions related to human rights should be dealt with on the basis of cooperation and mutual respect. Eritrea provides specific examples of its active cooperation with the Council and its mechanisms. Unfortunately, we are also subject to continuous reports that are unjustified, something that undermines a mutually beneficial cooperation based on dialogue with a view of pr improving the promotion and protection of human rights, an ideal that is uh, that all people are striving for. In this respect, we reiterate our support uh, to the commitment of Eritrea for the promotion and protection of human rights in the Council to focus on dialogue and robust cooperation that are filler, main pillars of its mission. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. I give the floor to the Syrian Arab Republic. 
Thank you, Madam Vice President. Uh, the Syrian Arab Republic reiterates its uh, position of principle, which is against human rights mechanisms that aim in to, uh, interfere in the territorial integrity, sovereignty, and internal affairs of certain countries. This is politicization. It does not serve human rights. Uh, it uses uh, human rights mechanisms for political reasons. This runs counter to the Charter of the United Nations. Uh, Issues of human rights can only be dealt with through constructive dialogue with countries. The UPR is the most effective mechanism for that. Syria believes that any support provided must be uh, with the consent of the concerned country. We also refer to UCMs uh, that lead to further poverty. We need uh, transparent mechanisms, far from any double standards with regards uh, to mandate holders. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Liechtenstein. Continuamos. Pasamos ahora. We will continue now, and we will now turn to the list of national human rights institutions and NGOs. I give the floor to the representative of Christian Solidarity Worldwide. Thank you, Madam Vice President. CSW thanks the Special Rapporteur and concurs regarding the lack of progress in Eritrea's human rights situation and deteriorations, including a freedom of religion or belief. Particularly notable is the case of Pastor Tesfe Sayum of Merzarete Christos Church, who spent 10 years in Mysore prison. He died of a brain tumour in hospital while still a prisoner and remained unburied for days due to the denial of a burial site. 103 young Christians who were arrested in mid-April while recording uploading their second worship song to YouTube are still in Mysore. 30 Christians arrested in a house in Keren in March also remain detained. Eritrea continues to export repression. It forces still occupy part of Arab and Tigray in violation of the Petora Agreement, reportedly committing rape, looting, extrajudicial killings and other crimes. They're currently demolishing homes in Zalambessa a month after preventing the AU MVCM from accessing the town. Eritrean troops are also implicated in forced returns of refugees from Sudan, including at least 95 activists and government opponents who face indefinite detention, forced conscription or enforced disappearance. Tellingly, this is Eritrea's only open border. We therefore urge this Council to renew the Rapporteur's mandate. We also reiterate Eritrea must be held accountable for historic and continuing international crimes committed at home and abroad. In addition, seats on this Council should henceforth be reserved for nations aligning with its ethos. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to East and Horn of Africa Human Rights Defenders Project. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Mr. Special Rapporteur, thank you for your report. Eritrean government violations continue unabated. They include grave violations, widespread impunity, and conscription into the national service system, including for indefinite periods. Since last year, the government conducted waves of roundups to identify people it considers draft evaders or deserters, punishing their family members. Eritrean forces are also credibly ac accused of grave violations of international law in Tigray which deserves the Council's attention. We welcome the Council's continued attention to Eritrea. Item 2 is the product of historical circumstances. By any standard, Eritrea belongs in Item 4. It remains one of the most serious situations in Africa and in the world. Madam Vice President, when it became a Council member, Eritrea hoped it would be shielded from scrutiny, even for crimes against humanity committed since 1991. Eritrea did not evade scrutiny. Since 2019, however, resolutions on the country have been merely procedural, with no substantive assessment of the situation. For the violations it continues to commit, for its refusal to cooperate with the Council, for its appalling failure to fulfill any of the membership criteria, the Eritrean government should now face stronger action in the form of a resolution that, one, clearly describes and condemns violations, and two, renews the mandate of the Special Rapporteur. Thank you. 
Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Civicus. Events. Civicus and the Eritrean Movement for Democracy and Human Rights appreciate the work of the Special Rapporteur and his latest report. The state of civic space in Eritrea remains closed and a matter of great concern, with no room for freedom of expression, especially for civil society journalists and political opponents. Freedom of the press is non-existent as independent and international media are not allowed to operate with only state-controlled media outlets available. 16 journalists, including Dawi Kisat, have been disappeared for over 20 years, making, making them the longest detained journalists in the world. There is also no information regarding the G15, former members of the government, who have been detained since 2001. Furthermore, the continued national service conscription violates the rights of citizens. Arbitrary detention continues to be used against thousands of real or perceived government critics and opponents without any access to due process of rights, such as access to a lawyer. We urgently call on the Eritrean government to cease forced recruitment and coercive practices, uh, detention, con um, to ensure open civic space for civil society participation, political opposition, and freedom of expression, and release all those arbitrarily detained. We further urge the government to engage constructively with the mandate of the Special Rapporteur and allow visit requests by thematic special procedures. We call on the Council to adopt a meaningful resolution renewing the crucial mandate of the Special Rapporteur and spelling out the severe human rights violations and abuses committed by the authorities at home and abroad. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Matt for Peace, Development and Human Rights Association. Thank you, Mr. President. Ma'at for Peace, Development and Human Rights is appreciative of the Special Rapporteur's efforts in including data on the abuses that indigenous communities in the country are having to endure. Ma'at shares the same concern on the Afar indigenous communities and condemns the actions of the Eritrean Navy. Ma'at is especially concerned by the fact that such communities will have nowhere to go if forcible displacement continues to take place, as the country that Eritreans usually used to seek refuge in currently faces several security issues that would endanger the lives of IDPs even further. Ma'at therefore calls on the Eritrean government to release those who were arbitrarily arrested and return their confiscated possessions. Ma'at also calls on the government to provide immediate assistance and protection to existing IDPs while also upholding their meaningful participation. This includes allowing permanent and undisturbed access to Dankalia so they can return to their traditional occupation and maintain an adequate standard of living. Thank you, Mr. President. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Conscious and Peace Tax International. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Conscience and Peace Tax International thanks you, Dr. Babaka, for your report. It is frustrating that the efforts of yourself and your predecessors in this mandate have had no effect in Eritrea itself. Eritrea continues to impose indiscriminate forced recruitment into indefinite military service on men, women, and indeed children alike, with, needless to say, no recognition whatever of the right of conscientious objection to military service. You are therefore the more to be congratulated for your successes in ameliorating the situation of Eritreans who have fled their country. Particularly welcome is the decision of the Netherlands Council of State, which you report, with its implication that the prospect of military service in Eritrea could itself be grounds for asylum. It would be useful to have a precise reference so that this could be cited as a, as a precedent in cases in other countries. Likewise welcome is the German decision freeing refugees from the need to obtain certification from the Eritrean Embassy in order to access travel documents. CPTI would encourage the relevant authorities in other countries of resort for Eritrean refugees to follow these welcome precedents. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Gracias. Thank you. I recognise Human Rights Watch. 
We thank the Special Rapporteur for his emphasis on critical rights concerns in Eritrea, including the ongoing abusive indefinite forced conscription system and the abuses Eritrean forces are committing in Tigray. From mid-2022 through to early 2023, the government of Eritrea conducted an intensive forced recruitment campaign during which it collectively punished relatives of alleged draft evaders and deserters. Older people and women with children were evicted from their homes and arbitrarily detained, some cut off from the government coupons, a food rationing system critical to many people's survival. As the Special Rapporteur's report describes, the government's conscription system continues to have a devastating impact on children's education, pushing students into military service before they finish secondary school and compelling many to drop out. Eight months after a cessation of hostilities agreement with Ethiopia, Eritrean forces in the Tigray region have continued to commit serious violations and to restrict civilians' access to critical aid. The Special Rapporteur rightfully underscores the silence of key stakeholders, including the Ethiopian and Eritrean authorities, on how serious violations committed by the Eritrean forces will be investigated and prosecuted. Inside Eritrea, authorities continue to detain individuals incommunicado and indefinitely, some for decades, including for their religious beliefs. In 2023, religious groups have continued to report new arrests of Christians. Eritrea still sits on the Human Rights Council with no consequences for its blatant rejection of membership standards. More public condemnation of Eritrea's rights record is needed Gracias. and ongoing scrutiny of the Eritrea. Thank you. I'm afraid your time is up. I recognise Youth Parliament for SDGs by video. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Special Rapporteurs on the human rights situation in Eritrea since 2012 indicates that the country has not implemented the recommendations. We can see examples of arrests and no fair trial and other violations, arbitrary detention above and beyond the law, premeditated attacks. We saw that, remember the death of an individual in prison. And there's also the punishment meted out against those who evade military service. Even the elderly are enrolled. These persons flee their country due to the situation. Furthermore, there's confiscation of property and land of citizens. Finally, we affirm the veracity of what has been outlined in the Special Rapporteur's report and call on Member States to renew the mandate. I thank you. Gracias. Tiene la palabra. Thank you. I recognize Amnesty International. Thank you, Madam Vice President. We welcome the report of the Special Rapporteur and call on this Council to support the continuation of his mandate. We remain concerned by the continuing lack of tangible progress regarding the human rights situation in Eritrea and the Eritrean government's persistent failure to address serious concerns. The government has focused its effort on continuing the practice of forced conscription of Eritreans into indefinite compulsory national military service. We note with concern the Special Rapporteur's findings of gross human rights violations, including torture, sexual and gender-based violence, and forced labor in the context of national military service. Eritrea must immediately end forced conscription into indefinite compulsory national military service. The government should further disclose the fate and whereabouts of 11 politicians who were arrested and forcibly disappeared by the government 22 years ago for merely criticizing the president and the political system in Eritrea. Where are David Isaac, Jimmy Kimmel, Hamid Mohamed Said, and 13 other journalists who were also forcibly disappeared? Special Rapporteur, your recent report has also underscored the lack of accountability for human rights violations in Ethiopia's Tigray region, particularly by Eritrean forces. Can you elaborate on what this Council must do to address justice and accountability for crimes under international law committed in northern Ethiopia by Eritrean Defence Force? Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I recognise the Centre for Legal Studies in Africa. Thank you, Madam Vice President. 
the Centre for Legal Studies in Africa is deeply concerned by the human rights situation in Eritrea, particularly when it comes to national service. Indeed, although there has been a cessation of hostilities agreement between the Ethiopian government and the uh, Tigray People's Liberation Front, concluded on the 2nd of November 2022, conscription is still a reality. It's important to recall that national service raises serious problems of human rights on a number of levels. It's a major obstacle to the right to education, and the education system is used for conscription. The National Service is also the main reason for people leaving the country. Leaving the country can be met with imprisonment, and conditions of detention are inhuman and degrading, and some are left uh, without access to a legal re remedy. In addition, there's sexual violence that continues to be perpetrated against military. Sejat also notes the existence of repression against conscientious objectors and members of the family. Repeated punishment and the de expulsions from homes run are, are some of the violations. Sejat would call on the Eritrean government to respect its international commitments, notably under Article 5 of the African Charter on Human People's Rights and the resolution adopted by the Human Rights Council on 7th of July 2022 that urged the Eritrean government to make progress when it comes to applying the recommendations formulated by the different reports. We thank you. Gracias. Tiene la palabra. Thank you. I recognize the Institute for Human Rights. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Institute for Human Rights highly welcomed the report of the Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in Eritrea. We are deeply disturbed about the erosion of civic space in the country. While the independent media that does not support the current regime's propaganda is outlawed, access to the information online is yet very limited. The enforced disappearance and detentions of journalists and opposition activists is of particular concern. As a systematic practice of enforced disappearance constitutes a crime against humanity, we echo the recommendations of the Special Rapporteur Rapporteur to reveal the information of the victims and seize the over-restrictive sanctions against free voices in the country. The limitations imposed on any ability to form a comprehensive civil society have chilling effect on all spheres of human life and bear negative impacts on the economic, social and cultural rights of the citizens. As the country is a council current member, we urge the authorities of Eritrea to uphold the binding human rights standards enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and ensure a free civic and democratic participation. We call the authorities to implement numerous recommendations of the UN treaty bodies and provide a necessary level of cooperation with OHCHR by granting a full access to the Special Rapporteur in line with his mandate. I thank you. Gracias. Thank you. That was the last speaker on our list for this dialogue. I return to the rapporteur, Mr. Mohammed Absal Abdel Salam, for the concluding remarks. Thank you. And also the questions um, raised by um, uh, and concerns raised by countries like Russia, um, China, uh, Cuba, um, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Burundi, um, uh, mainly focusing on cooperation with the, with, with the mandate. And actually, I would like to to mention, as my, as I as I made a call in my report, and also in my statement, and also the previous statements, that. Um, um, Eritrea has never cooperated, not only with my mandate, but also with my predecessors for the last um, uh, 12 years. And I think this is um, a matter of concern, and, uh, and I'm glad that uh, members of the Council raised the issue of cooperation. And I think this is, um, it is important, and, um, and I guess it is a um, key issue for, uh, for this Council to consider, because uh, the mandate is not created by me, it's created by the Council itself. And I hope that the Council will engage uh, constructively and engage also um, um, uh, proactively with, uh, with the government of Eritrea. Uh, and I know that Eritrea uh, each time actually um, 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 not cooperating with the mandate and, 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 um, and I need that um, for, for the council members to really open a channel of communication to allow these concerns. So now I believe that 
it is like an important issue for um, for the council really, really to address and and really uh, to engage constructively with the, gov with the government of Eritrea in order to, to make uh, uh, progress in that uh, in that aspect and, and I would like also to comment on um, on um, um, the question and I think it's an important one raised by by the UK regarding about uh, regarding what is actually what actually the practical steps need to be taken um, um, by this council in order to to, uh, to, to defend its integrity uh, I believe that everybody in this council every member states uh, believes in human rights, and I believe that they want to protect the integrity of this council. And, and I think um, um, it is important, um, um, Eritrea as a member of this council, to, to cover it. Um, uh, and, and also, I would like to um, um, that um, uh, the steps that need to be taken by Eritrea um, and the actions. Uh, in my opinion, has some sh there are actually some short-term um, um, practical steps need to be taken to show its willingness. One is actually to reform the National Military Service, um, also to release uh, those who are arbitrarily detained and, and those who disappeared for actually decades. I, I, I speak to, to, to many victims and families. Um, they have their loved ones actually disappeared for, for three decades, and I think this is not really like, acceptable. And, and I would like to re remind um, member states there is no any issue of politicization here. Here we are talking about people disappeared, disappeared, and I constantly talking to their families, and even they are not, they cannot access them. They, they don't even know their whereabouts. So I think this is an issue. Uh, to show willingness on, on the part of Eritrea, it's important to release uh, disappeared people. And, and also um, um, the issue of the due process of law, um, independence of the judiciary, these are all steps can be, can be taken. And um, um, there's a question related to the issue of, um, uh, with the cessation of hostilities in, uh, in Ethiopia, what are the new opportunities? And this question um, raised by the EU, um, and I think there is like um, many opportunities with the cessation of, of, the, of the hostilities in the Tigray region. I guess um, um, Eritrea can take particular steps because uh, in, in, uh, during the conflict since November 2020, Eritrea mentioned that the Tigray conflict is actually re represents an existential threat. So now with the cessation of hostilities, I hope that uh, Eritrea will take like uh, to de demobilize the population from the military service, to reform the national military service, and um, and also to um, um, to give even Eritrea the choice, Eritrean youth the choice between joining the military service and to or to engage in their professional lives, and, and I think this is an important an important issue. Um, 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 I also um, refer to what mentioned by France related to uh, the situation of, of Eritrean asylum seekers. And, um, and I guess it's important that the uh, situation of Eritreans outside um, Eritrea um, and in the diaspora, it is important to be considered and to be recognized. And, um, and also the issue of um, the national military service is very intrinsic and linked to the serious human rights situ situations uh, in the country. So I guess that is important um, that Eritreans have the right um, um, to protection outside uh, and, um, and also there is a need for the creation of uh, legal pathways for uh, relocation of asylum seekers um, and also adoption of good immigration policies to welcome refugees, Eritrean refugees. In the region and also uh, in the region, I think it's important with the Sudan conflict. It is important for protection for Eritreans, and I put this in my report. And also it's important for, um, for uh, Eritreans who are actually living, uh, uh, moving uh, beyond, beyond the region. Um, I would like also to... Um, 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 the question raised by uh, the Netherlands related how Eritrea could be, Eritrea could be supported, um, is in particular the civil society. 
um, and also be protected from reprisals. I think there is a need for um, um, practical support in terms of funding, in terms of capacity building for NGOs, because as you know, civic space in, inside the tree is very limited. Actually, there is no, as I mentioned in my statement and in my report, no civic uh, space, and also there is no any uh, opportunity for uh, um, a political uh, parties to be uh, to be formed and to practice their their right as their political association. So I think um, um, support for Eritreans in the diaspora is really an important um, an important um, step to be taken. And uh, the issue related to accountability, I think, is an important question related uh, raised by Amnesty International. What could be done um, uh, with regard to accountability in um, in uh, the crimes committed in? Um, in the Tigray region, I think it's an important question. Uh, I welcomed uh, in my report um, the agreement signed between the Syrian government and um, and the TPLF. Uh, but at the same time, I think um, there is a need really for uh, accountability for um, crimes committed, and I and I I, didn't, I, I and, and I outlined all these um, violations in details in my previous two reports, and, and I'm not repeating. Um, what mentioned in the, in, 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 uh, in, in the last two reports, but actually I'm calling for uh, an accountability, and I think it is important for these crimes to be uh, for those who committed violations by the Eritrean Defence Forces need, need to be ta uh, to be taken into account. Uh, and I guess um, um, some countries mentioned that I actually exceeded my mandate. I did not exceed my mandate, and I think this was a question raised um, in my first report. I said that uh, I have a mandate as far as um, um, because um, as, as far as Eritrean nationals are concerned. And, and, and what happened in Tigray, the destruction of four camps, Hesas and Shemelba and other two camps, it is quite clear that Eritrean armed forces has effective control over these camps. And, 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 and even this documented by the Commission of Inquiry related to uh, um, um, uh, set up by, by, uh, by the council. And, um, and then uh, once Eritrea have effective control over certain territory outside it is own territory, then I believe under international law, human rights law applies. And the other point is actually we are dealing with, uh, I have a mandate because I'm dealing with um, the protection of Eritrean refugees, not only in Tigray, but also globally. And in my report, I reported on the situation of um, Eritreans in Europe and also in the region. So this is an integral part of my mandate. Um, and, and, I, and I still uh, defending this position. And I read this in the council in, in my first report, and actually um, uh, I remember the, um, the objection by, by Eritrea was actually rejected. So I think this is a point to be important to be raised. Um, um, finally, actually I would like to, uh, to conclude by um, expressing that uh, Eritrea news are, are actually the, the, the future of Eritrea. Over the years, I have met exceptional young men and women from Eritrea who actually have crossed the African continent, take very per, uh, dangerous journey through the desert, through the sea, and escape, the, uh, and, and escape actually danger for in, in Eritrea to reach freedom and to build a good future. And I think uh, some of them are actually our children and, and uh, children of, of refugees. And they have the, and, and I really, they need the chance to live a dignified life. And they inspired me. Um, um, and, um, and, and, um, and, and actually, I, I thank them for uh, keeping the dream alive. I thank them for continuing pushing this mandate. And also, I thank member states who are actually really keen for this mandate to be effective. And above all, also, I thank um, um, NGOs for their constant support to, the, to my mandate. Thank you. I'd like to thank Mr. Mohammed Abdel Salam Babikar for his participation in this interactive dialogue. We shall now take a small technical break before starting the interactive dialogue with the Commission of Inquiry on the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem and in Israel.
Excellencias. Excellencies, distinguished delegates. We shall begin the interactive dialogue with the Independent Commission of Inquiry on the Occupied Palestinian Territory, including East Jerusalem and in Israel, on its report submitted pursuant to Council Resolution S31. The list of speakers will close in 15 minutes. It is my pleasure to welcome the distinguished members of the Commission of Inquiry. Ms. Navi Pillay, who will be joining us via video, Mr. Melun Kotari and Mr. Chris Sidoti. I now give the floor to Ms. Navi Pillay for a presentation of the report of the Commission. Mr. President, Excellencies, I am pleased to present our second report to the Human Rights Council's 53rd session, A slash HRC slash 53 slash 22, on behalf of the Commission of Inquiry on the Occupied Palestinian Territory, including East Jerusalem and Israel. The report presented to you today focuses on attacks, restrictions and harassment of civil society. In preparing the report, the Commission has engaged with victims and witnesses as part of our mandate and through two sets of public and close hearings held in November 2022 and March 2023. We express our gratitude to all those who have provided information to us, often at great personal risk. Palestinian and Israeli civil society members have long stood at the forefront of advocating for self-determination for the Palestinian people, for an end to the occupation and an end to the recurring human rights violations, and for accountability. Consistent pressure exerted by civil society to hold authorities accountable for human rights violations has made them a target for those who have no desire for change. We found that the rights to freedoms of association, expression and opinion, and to peaceful assembly, as well as a number of economic, social and cultural rights, are being violated by all three responsible authorities, the government of Israel and the government of the state of Palestine and the de facto authorities in Gaza. Our examination revealed that the majority of violations are being committed by Israeli authorities as part of the Israeli government's goal of consolidating its permanent occupation at the expense of the rights of the Palestinian people. We found that the Israeli government has increasingly restricted civic space through a strategy of delegitimizing and silencing Palestinian and Israeli civil society to quell dissent, thwart democratic institutions and practices, and to strengthen authoritarianism. This includes criminalizing Palestinian civil society organizations and their members by labeling them as terrorists and threatening institutions that give a platform for civil society discourse. It also entails pressurizing donors and implementing measures to cut or end funding. We found that this strategy is implemented towards Israeli and Palestinian civil society organizations and activists, and internationally towards advocates of Palestinian rights worldwide, with the support of extremist right-wing organizations. Our report found that Israeli authorities have used a variety of punitive measures intended to deter and interfere with the activities of Palestinian civil society members. Deprivation of liberty, including through arbitrary arrests and detention, administrative detention, travel bans, and restrictions of movement, deportations, and revocation of identity and residency documents are all widely practiced against civil society members. Additionally, the Commission found that Israeli authorities have subjected Palestinian human rights defenders, including journalists, to ill treatment while in detention. The Commission found that security agents of the Palestinian Authority and the Gaza authorities have also used detention, torture, and ill treatment to punish and, and, and intimidate critics and opponents. Legislation 
including counter-terrorism legislation, is increasingly used by all responsible authorities to undermine the ability of civil societies to operate effectively. We consider such legislation to be neither necessary nor proportionate. In particular, we found that Israeli authorities' application of its 2016 counter-terrorism law to Palestinian civil society organizations through the designations of some organizations as terrorist or as unlawful organizations violates international human rights law. In the occupied territory, the cybercrime law is used to enhance surveillance and control of online activism. We also found that some actions undertaken by the Israeli government against civil society organizations may amount to violations of international humanitarian law and may constitute crimes under international law. Our report sought to identify the impact of the shrinking civic space on different segments of civil society. We found that Palestinian journalists are particularly targeted by all duty bearers with harassment, assaults, smear campaigns, arrests, detentions, accusations, and charges of incitement to violence. We found these attacks to be an intricate part of efforts to deter journalists from carrying out their work of investigating, reporting, and holding authorities to account. Israeli journalists are also being monitored and harassed and increasingly practice self-censorship out of fear of retribution. We heard testimonies on the killing of the journalist Shirin Abu Akhla during our public hearings. We will include the results of that investigation in our next report to the General Assembly. Palestinian and Israeli women human rights defenders have been targeted by all duty bearers and by non-state actors. They have been specifically targeted by Palestinian state actors and anti-gender rights groups because they are seen to challenge patriarchal and traditional norms. Israeli women human rights defenders who support Palestinian rights have also been targeted. We found that lack of accountability for gender-based violence, including sexual violence, enables and encourages the targeting of women human rights defenders. The Commission documented multiple actions undertaken by Israeli and Palestinian authorities and other actors that threaten and shrink cultural space affecting artists and cultural activists in Israel and in the occupied Palestinian territory. In Israel, the government is intervening more frequently to prevent artistic activity and events that criticize the government's occupation policies or that focus on the rights of the Palestinian people or promote Palestinian identity, culture, arts, history, and heritage. We note that attacks and arrests of civil society members have adversely affected children, both as human rights defenders themselves and as witnesses to the targeting of their family members. We continue to be gravely concerned with the deteriorating situation in the occupied Palestinian territory. Just last month, we witnessed yet another escalation of hostilities in Gaza, resulting in civil casualties and damage to civilian objects. Civilians were also killed in Israel as a result of rocket attacks from Gaza. We are alarmed by the high number of civilians, including children, killed in the West Bank and Gaza in recent years, including in the recent escalation. In 2023, Israeli authorities continued dispossessing Palestinians of their identity, their land and livelihood in the occupied West Bank, including through expansion of illegal settlements and outposts with the aim of further advancing the permanent occupation and annexation. At the same time, settler violence is increasingly frequent and serious and is now a daily reality for Palestinians. Our next report to the General Assembly will examine the use of force and unlawful killings, including recurring Israeli attacks and rockets fired from Gaza. 
Mr. President, we call on all duty bearers and all member states to take measures enabling Palestinian and Israeli civil society members to continue their important work free from fear of punishment and retribution against themselves or their families. We emphasize again that the far-reaching and intersectional harm caused by the Israeli occupation reaches all segments of Palestinian and Israeli society and is intrinsically intertwined with actions and policies examined in our report. We therefore reiterate our call that Israel complies fully with its international legal obligations and ends the occupation. Thank you. I'd like to thank Ms. Pillai for presenting the report. Now, following our practice, we'll start by hearing from the delegation of the countries concerned. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Israel. You have five minutes. We will move ahead. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the State of Palestine. You have five minutes. Thank you, Madam Vice President. At the outset, I would like uh, to extend my thanks and gratitude to the members of the Commission of Inquiry and the Secretariat for preparing uh, this report in accordance with the mandate of the Commission. Unfortunately, a number of countries have joined the United States to submit a joint statement against this Commission and it's mandate. This we refuse. We condemn. It is disgraceful. We would have expected these states to speak of the Nakba, the catastrophe of the Palestinian people ongoing since 75 years, the illegal occupation since 56 years, the incursions of towns and uh, cities and camps con that continue by the occupation authorities and the herds of settlers and the targeting of children, of the elderly, of civilians, of women. Only yesterday there were seven martyrs and 100 wounded, of them 15 in critical condition in Jenin and Hussein. We would have expected a discussion on the Sef of land, of the building of settlements since 1967, of refusing to cooperate by the occupying power with the mechanisms of the Human Rights Council, especially the uh, fact-finding missions, the special rapporteurs, the mandate holders, and preventing uh, the High Commissioner and his office from getting visas and residency permits and the continuous restrictions on their work. Madam Vice President, the report refers to a number of illegal Israeli practices against civil society organizations and human rights defense from Israel and Palestine and other international organizations. Uh, this is reflected in threats and violations, laws and punitive uh, measures. Uh, this is what happened with the director of Bet Salem, an Israeli association, after participating in the Security Council meeting, as well as with breaking the silence Israeli institution accused of anti-Semitism. The Minister of War of the Occupying uh, Power classified six uh, Palestinian institutions as uh, terrorists. They, their offices were closed. Uh, the employees uh, were arrested. They were prevented from travel in an attempt uh, to legit delegitimize these institutions. The report uh, refers to the case of engineer Muhammad Al-Halabi, the director of World Vision. He was sentenced to 12 years in prison. Uh, 
This also happened with Salah Hamouri, a legal activist that was imprisoned, expelled from Palestine, and prevented from re-entering. In 2021, you saw the shelling and destruction of a media center in Gaza. The center housed a number of Palestinian, Arab, and international media to prevent them from reporting on the crimes of the occupation. The uh, occupation forces killed 52 journalists, including Shirin Abu Akla, without any accountability. This report shows the uh, uh, aggressive uh, nature of the policies of the occupying power and the systematic policies of oppression and undermining the work of CSOs and human rights defenders. This means that we need more than one mechanism to deter the uh, occupying power to curb their racist policies and to guarantee non-impunity. We are following up uh, on uh, the violations and events mentioned in the report in the area of the national authority. We have dealt with some of the cases and are following up on other on the basis of the respect of law, the applicable laws, including the basic law of the Palestinian Authority that guarantees the freedom of expression and peaceful assembly, as well as the work of civil society. In conclusion, I would like to submit two questions to the uh, Commission. One, what are the obstacles uh, before the implementation of the mandate of the Commission? Secondly, how will investigation be conducted into all the root causes of recurring tensions, instability, and prolongation of the conflict, including systematic discrimination on the basis basis of national, racial, or religious identity. I thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And now I give the floor to the Commissioner General of the Independent Commission for Human Rights of Palestine. You have five minutes. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, Israeli violations of freedom of opinion and expression, impingements on media, freedoms and targeting of activists, journalists, and human rights defenders ac across the occupied Palestinian territory are part and parcel of Israel's policy to prevent and impact activists for raising and covering issues and events. The Israeli occupying authorities undermine the freedom of opinion and expression throughout the OPT. Israel pursues a systematically policy of targeting media representatives and activists. While their institutions are targeted, journalists and advocates are assaulted, arrested, and placed under a travel ban. These practices recommend as to uphold and put activists reflected a policy set for, for deterring human rights defenders. Of these, Salah Hamouri was deported from the OPT. Such practices convey the message that human rights defenders can be targeted, placed in arbitrary detention, and sent into exile. On the other hand, Israeli authorities restrict the freedom of opinion and expression and uh, persecute human rights defenders, activists, activities, and journalists. These practices are a direct reflection of 
constraints placed on Palestinian authorities as part of their relations and dealings with Israel. With Israel. Consequences are manifest in Palestinian citizens' criticism and opposition to policies imposed under the agreements uh, uh, concluded with Israel. Gracias. Thank you. And I'd like to inform you that the list of speakers is now closed. Now I invite interested delegations in to make comments or ask questions to the Commission. I give the floor to distinguished representative of the United States of America on behalf of a group of countries. Thank you, Madam Vice President. I read this statement on behalf of a growing cross-regional group of 27 countries, including the United States, that are deeply concerned about the open-ended commission of inquiry established following the escalation of violence in May 2021. Resolution S31 established a COI of open-ended mandate with no sunset clause, end date, or clear limitations connected to the escalation in May of 2021. For this reason, many of the Council's members at the time expressed fundamental concerns when the resolution came up for adoption. To be clear, no one is above scrutiny, and it is this Council's responsibility to promote and protect human rights the world over. We must work to counter impunity and promote accountability on a basis of consistent and universally applied standards. We believe the nature of this COI is further demonstration of long-standing disproportionate attention given to Israel and the Council and must stop. We continue to believe that this long-standing disproportionate scrutiny should end and that the Council should address all human rights concerns regardless of country in an even-handed manner. Regrettably, we are concerned that the Commission of Inquiry will further contribute to the polarization of a situation about which so many of us are concerned. I thank you. Gracias. Tiene la palabra. Thank you. I now give the floor to distinguished representative Venezuela on behalf of a group of countries. Gracias, señora. Thank you very much, Madam Vice President. It's a pleasure once again to see you guiding the work of this council. Venezuela takes the floor on behalf of the group of friends in defense of the Charter of the United Nations. We thank the COI for its report and reiterate our full support for its mandate. We express grave concern over attempts to undermine the Human Rights Council-mandated COI. We urge all states to reject such attempts. For many years, the countries of the Group of Friends have maintained a firm position of solidarity with the Palestinian people and its just cause, and the condemnation of the massive, flagrant, and systematic violations of human rights and of international humanitarian law committed by Israel, including increasing restrictions on civic space as an intentional strategy with the aim of delegitimizing and silencing Palestinian civil society, criminalizing it, and implementing measures aimed at cutting off the source of its funding. We call on the COI, in line with its mandate, to focus in its next reports on the root cause of the situation, including by investigating the 75 years denial of the Palestinian people's right to self-determination and the return of Palestinian refugees. Madam Vice President, we remain committed to strengthening our efforts, including active engagement in international initiatives aimed at ending the Israeli occupation, which constitutes an illegal colonial occupation and apartheid regime. I thank you. Gracias, Embajador. I thank you, Ambassador. Now I give the floor to the distinguished representative of the European Union. Thank you. The EU has carefully assessed the report and thanks the commissioners for their presentation today. The EU recalls its principal position of constructive engagement with UN bodies and investigative mechanism and full respect for their independence. Individual EU states who were members of the Council in 2021 did not support the creation of this commission because of concerns about its broad mandate and permanent nature. The EU position concerning the developments on the ground is well known. This includes our repeated call for restraint, our position on the status quo in the holy places, strong condemnation for terrorism and violence, concern for Gaza, and opposition to Israel's settlement policies and activities. 
The respect of international law and accountability for violations committed is a cornerstone for peace and security in the region. The EU is proud of its continued support to civil society. It is crucial to ensure a safe and enabling space, both online and offline, and that anti-terrorism legislation does not lead to undermining civil society and its contribution to fairer societies and to the pursuit of accountability. The EU reiterates its support for human rights defenders, journalists and other media workers, and calls for the fundamental right to freedom of expression to be upheld, including in areas under PA control. Finally, the EU recalls that Israel should facilitate access for all UN mandate holders, including the Office of the High Commissioner. I thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to distinguished representative of Pakistan on behalf of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Thank you. We thank the Commission of Inquiry for its report, reiterate our support for its mandate, and register our grave concerns over attempts to undermine its authority. We deplore Israel's persistent non-cooperation with the Commission and its continued defiance of decisions of the Security Council as well as this body. Lack of accountability, silence and shielding of powerful states has emboldened the occupation machinery to label the Palestinians as terrorists in order to delegitimize their 75 years long just struggle for the realization of the right to self-determination. This must end. Impunity is writ large on Israel's dehumanizing and apartheid policies. It is unconscionable that a self-styled democracy openly mocks and violates every tenet of international law in the third decade of 21st century without any accountability. We condemn Israel's policy to squeeze the civic space by criminalizing Palestinian civil society organizations on the pretext of terrorism. We recommend COI to consider in, in its next reports analysis of the impact of protected occupation and lack of accountability on the integrity of the rules-based international order, recommendations on accountability measures for egregious international law and human rights violations, third state's obligations to ensure respect for international law in the OPT, and identification of structural constraints impeding the realization of the right to self-determination of these Palestinian people and concrete measures to remove them. I thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Oman on behalf of the Gulf Cooperation Council. Madam Vice President, the GCC countries have taken note of the report of the Independent International Commission on the, uh, of, inqui of Inquiry on the Occupied Palestinian Territory, including East Jerusalem and Israel, the occupying power. We condemn the grave violations of the safety, rights, and freedoms of the Palestinians, including successive attacks and harassment on civil society and the use of Israeli military force to criminalize civilians and violation of the international laws and norms. We call on the international community to intervene to stop Israel's unilateral measures and targeting the Palestinian presence in the city of Jerusalem and its attempts to change its legal character, demographic composition, and arrangements of Islamic holy sites. The GCC condemns the construction of settlement units in the occupied Palestinian territories and reject any move to annex them to Israel or impose Israeli sovereignty over them, as this constitutes a clear violation of international legitimacy. We commend the all, all efforts made within the framework of the revival of the Arab Peace Initiative, as well as Arab efforts to reach calm and a ceasefire between the Palestinian and Israeli sides, and support all tireless efforts to request the State of Palestine to obtain full membership in the United Nations. In conclusion, we reaffirm our firm position on the centrality of the Palestinian cause and our full support for the sovereignty of the Palestinian people over all Palestinian <coughs> territories occupied since June 1967 and for the establishment of an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital in accordance with the Arab Peace Initiative and resolutions and international resolutions. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Lebanon on behalf of a group of Arab states. Madam Vice President, I have the honor to deliver this statement on behalf of the Arab group. You can find the full address on the extranet. We welcome the Commission of Inquiry and thank it 
for the efforts made in uh, putting together this report and for the uh, valuable presentation thereof. We reiterate our support for the mandate. The group also deplores the occupying powers' lack of cooperation with the committee, with the commission, and condemn the attempt to undermine its mandate. We comment, uh, condemn the continuous and systematic attacks on civil society and human rights defenders by the occupying power and the restrictions imposed on it in order to silence it and prevent it from monitoring the colonial policies of the occupation, not to mention the criminalization of a number of in institutions as terrorists, pressure and threats against those that provide a platform for civil society, and attempt to cut off uh, f their funding. We stress that these policies uh, are an essential part of the policy of colonialism and apartheid in the occupied territories. In this regard, we stress that ending the brutal occupation of the Palestinian territory is a first step to ending the ongoing silence of violence and violations against Palestinian people. The group calls on the, the Commission to address extensively and in line with its mandate, address the root causes of the most important uh, of the 79th anniversary of the Nakba catastrophe and the denial of the Palestinian people's right to self-determination. In conclusion, the group stresses that accountability <coughs> are the, uh, is the cornerstone of the work of this council. And thank you, Madam Vice President. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to the United Arab Emirates. Thank you very much, Madam Vice President. My delegation took note with great interest of the report of the Commission on Inquiry related to the occupied Palestinian territories, including East Jerusalem. We reiterate our commitment to provide support to the Palestinian people in the exercise of all the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people. We provide support at all levels. We provided 25 million U.S. dollars to the Microsite Hospital in East Jerusalem, working together with the World Health Organization and the UN coordinator. Um, his uh, Highness, um, the head of state, Madam Sint, has provided three million U.S. dollars for the reconstruction of the Hairwala village and provide support for the people affected by the most recent events. And last week, seven million dollars were allocated for that cause. In conclusion, we are in favor of the restoration of peace and stability in the region, but that can only be done with the full resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict on the basis of relevant UN resolutions and as part of diplomatic efforts and peaceful dialogue. These steps require political will from both sides to participate in a positive way in these negotiations are to realize this vision to ensure de-escalation and avoid any provocations. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Pakistan. Ambassador. We align with the OIC statement and reiterate our support for the Commission's valuable work. We appreciate focus of the current report on civil society space, given that their advocacy role has a special salience in situations of foreign occupation. However, we are concerned over the apparent impression of parity in terms of obligations of the occupying power, occupied state of Palestine, and people of Gaza living under blockade and dire humanitarian situation. We share the Commission's concerns over increasing reports from some states indicating a shrinking space for freedom of expression in relation to criticism of Israeli authorities, human rights conduct, and in this regard, we reiterate our call for ab abandoning the policy of appeasement. We express our deep concern over grave human rights violations and abuses in the OPT, including in East Jerusalem. Killing of innocent civilians, including children, storming of Al-Aqsa Mosque, expansion of illegal settlements, settlers' violence, administrative detentions, and airstrikes on populated Gaza Strip are a reminder of the callous disregard for human rights and rule of law. We suggest the Commission to intensify its focus on spotlighting the underlying root causes of recurrent tensions and protected occupation, as well as recommending steps aimed at ending impunity, ensuring accountability and justice. I thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to Kuwait. Thank you, uh, President. 
at the outset, we would like to associate ourselves with uh, the statements made by the groups we are affiliated with, and we welcome the efforts made by the members of the Commission of Inquiry. Despite constraints and harassment imposed by Israel during the fact-finding and collection exercise of uh, data, we are at a, a time of uh, these 75th anniversary of the adoption of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, and also um, years have gone by since the attacks on Palestine and refugees have not been able to return home despite international law. We condemn energetically practices and violations targeting the Palestinian people. We reiterate our position of principle. We support the fundamental rights of the Palestinian people and we support the efforts being made to guarantee the provision of services and shelter to refugees. Through the Human Rights Council, we would call on the international community to bring pressure to bear on the occupying power to bolster uh, these rights through true fact-finding and establishment of the facts. Gracias. Tiene la palabra. Thank you. I now call on Qatar. Thank you very much, uh, Vice President. At the outset, I would like to thank the COI, and we denounce the fact that the occupation authorities have not cooperated with the COI to allow it to discharge its mandate. We strongly condemn the systematic violations on the part of Israeli forces and Israeli settlers against uh, Palestinian activists and human rights defenders as well as journalists uh, and uh, the utilization of illegal terms like prolonged detention, the in, uh, intimidation during uh, investigation, as well as the delegitimization of uh, civil society organization in addition to the forcible expulsion of uh, the Palestinian journalists, uh, and all of that constitute grave violations of human rights, international humanitarian rights, and uh, are crimes under international law. All those acts are part of a systematic plan that seeks to silence the Palestinian voices that record the crimes by the Israeli occupation authorities, and this is part of uh, the aggressive uh, policies uh, of Israel. And therefore, we call upon the international community to condemn the fact that Israel has been targeting civil society in Palestine and to move quickly to ensure their support and also to hold accountable all of those who have committed violations against the rights of the Palestinians. Thank you. Luxembourg. Thank you, Ambassador. I now call on Luxembourg. Thank you, Vice President. Luxembourg associates itself with the statement by the European Union. My delegation thanks the Independent International Commission for its report and restates its appeal to all sides to cooperate fully with it. Luxembourg is deeply alarmed by the restrictions on the space of online and offline civil society in occupied Palestinian territory and in Israel, and the harassment and attacks perpetrated against journalists, human rights defenders, and NGOs. We condemn the strategy used by the Israeli government aimed at delegitimizing civil, Palestinian civil society organizations by describing them as terrorists and reducing their funding by bringing pressure to bear on international donors. We request that the government no longer resort to military decrees to limit gatherings, nor should it resort to long-term administrative detention of Palestinian human rights defenders. As the occupying power, Israel is obliged to protect human rights defenders against the attacks by settlers and to put an end to widespread impunity. All forms of harassment and arbitrary violence against civil society, including by Israeli security forces, must stop. Luxembourg condemns the repression brought to bear on civic space by the Palestinian Authority and by the de facto Gaza authorities, particularly aimed at human rights defenders and militants for the rights of LGBTIQ plus persons, that was female defenders. Commissioners, what in your view are the deep-seated causes behind the growing restrictions on the space of civil society that you've described in your report? Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. I now call on Iraq. Thank you, Madam Vice President. <clears throat> My delegation would like to welcome 
the COI uh, and its president and its members. And once again, we reiterate our full support to the mandate, and we underline the importance of uh, an investigation of the real root causes that are causing the repeated tensions and instability and the protraction of the conflict. The continued violations on the part of the occupying power against civil society organizations, the Palestinian ones, and the arbitrary detention of journalists and human rights defendants, as well as their forcible deportation and the suppression of the freedom of uh, the press, all of that is part of a systematic policy that wants to silence those who are defending the rights of the Palestinian people, their legitimate rights of the Palestinian people, and which calls to expose the violations by the occupying power and expose these to the international community. All of these uh, constitute uh, violations of international humanitarian law and international human rights law and are crimes under international law. We call upon the international community to take its responsibilities to put an end to the crimes uh, by the occupying power against the people of Palestine and to stop its um, illegal occupation of the Palestinian territories, as well as to put an end to the continuous expropriation of land and the destruction of homes and the forcible displacement of the uh, uh, defenseless Palestinian people. Finally, we would like to indicate that the only way to attain peace is to end occupation and to respect the rights of the Palestinian people to self-determination and the establishment of its independent state uh, in Palestine with Jerusalem as its capital. Thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The Kingdom of the Netherlands aligns itself with the EU statement and thanks the Commission of Inquiry for the presentation of its report. Acknowledging the mandate of the Commission as a formal decision of this Council, my delegation has carefully considered the report findings. However, we remain concerned about the open-ended nature of the Commission of Inquiry's mandate and the absence of a sunset clause. As a, consens as a consequence, we consider the establishment of the Commission of Inquiry to be a further demonstration of disproportionate attention given to Israel, a bias that must stop. We maintain that the Commission's mandate should be subject to periodical, re periodical review with the option to terminate it, as is the case for all other Commissions of Inquiry. The Netherlands is worried about the recent developments on the ground. We are strongly concerned by the violence in Yenin and the loss of civilian lives. Furthermore, the Netherlands calls upon Israel not to proceed with the plans to change the settlement's planning and administration process and for settlement expansion. These illegal unilateral steps risk further escalating an already tense situation and form an obstacle to peace. I thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to the Sovereign Order of Malta. Madam Vice President, the Sovereign Order of Malta shares many of the concerns expressed in the COI's report. Its findings regarding the violations on the right to health are particularly disturbing in view of the Order of Malta's long-standing medical and health care assistance throughout the region. Its Holy Family Hospital in Bethlehem is responsible for the delivery of over 70 percent of all children being born in the area. Since 1990, the hospital staff has aided with the delivery of over 90,000 babies of all faiths. However, in the present tense situation and due to the general lack of safety, our ambulances encounter serious difficulties in reaching the hospital, our mobile clinics are unable to deliver adequate health services, and the protection of our medical health staff in Palestine is not guaranteed. We welcome the report's recommendation to repeal laws and provisions that obstruct the work of civil society, including laws imposing unnecessary and unreasonable financial, procedural, and technical barriers. The continuance of such laws has a grave impact on the operational capability of our hospital and the residents of the greater Bethlehem community that are dependent on the medical services provided. Finally, we also wish to draw the Commission's attention to issues regarding freedom to practice religion when believers are denied access to Christian places of worship. We should always remember that freedom of religion or belief is a universal human right. Thank you, Madam vice Chair. <coughs> Gracias. Tiene la palabra. 
Thank you. I now call on France. Merci. Thank you, Madam Vice President. France associates itself with a statement by the European Union, and we recall our position on the mandated completion of inquiry. Inquiry that we consider to be too broad, setting too vague objectives to be able to shed light serenely on cycles of violence. France is deeply concerned over the deterioration of the situation on the ground as a result of unilateral measures, provocations and violence against civilians, including violence by settlers. Our unwavering commitment to Israel's security is well known. Israelis, like Palestinians, have the right to live in peace and security. We recall the obligations incumbent on Israel in terms of upholding international humanitarian law and the imperative need to protect civilians in the occupied Palestinian territories. France condemns the settlement policy, which runs counter to international law. We call on Israel to overturn its recent decisions and to respect its commitments undertaken during the meetings of Aqaba and Sharm el-Sheikh and to stop its, the evictions once and for all. In Palestinian territories, as everywhere else, France will never recognize illegal annexation of territory. The historical status quo on holy places in Jerusalem must be preserved, and we would recall the specific role to be played by Jordan. We call on the Palestinian Authority and Israel to preserve free and open civic space, to stop all acts of intimidation, and to allow the work of human rights defenders, organizations of civil society, and journalists to go forward. Only a two-state solution with Jerusalem as capital of the two states will allow uh, to make it possible to establish a just and lasting peace. France is willing to contribute with partners to a political process leading to a global peace and overall peace between Israelis and Palestinians. Thank you very much. Thank you. I now call on Spain. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Vice President. We thank the Commission of Inquiry for the work that it is, uh, that it is the, the work that the Commission of Inquiry is doing, and the report presented, as well as reaffirming our support to its mandate. Spain associates itself with a statement by the European Union. The report reflects the way in which civil society is being attacked, harassed, and restricted by all of the officials. For, by all of those who are responsible for pr protecting it. And it gives examples of these attacks, uh, which are also directed against journalists. Concerning violations of human rights committed by Israel that appear in the report, Spain would urge the government of Israel to act in the face of abuses uh, carried out against representatives of civil society by non-state actors, including settlers. In addition, we lament and regret the impunity of uh, the forces and security bodies of Israel when they act with excessive use of force. We would call for a reversal of the decisions to declare various NGOs illegal and a stop to the criminalization of journalists and human rights defenders so that they can continue carrying out their work in the field. The Commission documents various cases where Palestinian security forces are responsible for sexual and gender-based violence against women who are defenders of human rights, particularly during civic protests or as a reprisal to, for participating in those. We would call on the Palestinian authorities to take all possible measures to investigate these abuses and to avoid harassment uh, against women, above all digital harassment. We would make an appeal that uh, there be an end to violence and that the human rights and international humanitarian law be guaranteed. Thank you. I now call on the United States of America. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The United States remains steadfast in its support for civil society and human rights defenders worldwide. Full stop. Madam Vice President, the United States firmly and consistently opposes the open-ended nature of this commission of inquiry, which only reinforces the reputation of UN bodies as vulnerable to the actions of member states intent upon isolating and excoriating the state of Israel. This is a view that is widely shared, as seen by the growing number of co-signers on the joint statement I read earlier, already a significant increase from last year, the many country statements today that echo the same concerns, and the dissent by several states when this commission was created before the U.S. rejoined the Council. I also wish to reiterate deep concern over the remarks by one of the commissioners, echoing disturbing anti-Semitic tropes and questioning Israel's right to UN membership. We unequivocally condemn anti-Semitism and anti-Israel bias and call on all members to do the same. Members of commissions of inquiry and fact-finding missions are expected to remain independent and impartial. 
The United States underscores the critical need for Israelis and Palestinians to initiate steps toward peace, urging leaders to reject provocations to violence. Accountability for violent actions must be equal, irrespective of the background of the perpetrators or the victims. Biased and one-sided action on the part of this council does nothing to promote such advances. I thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to the Syrian Arab Republic. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Once again, we are before a report confirming what hundreds of UN reports and resolutions have unanimously agreed upon regarding the seriousness of the Israeli occupation's crimes in the occupied Palestinian territory including East Jerusalem and in the occupied Syrian Golan, and the gravity of uh, its violations of international humanitarian law and uh, international human rights law that are committed under an apartheid regime. The report presented practices aimed at prolonging and perpetuating the occupation at the expense of the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people, their identity and history. While the occupation's terror against the Palestinian people continues on a daily basis and the list of its brutal, bloody, and racist crimes continues since the Nakba, as what we are witnessing in Jenin uh, these days, the cruelest and gravest of crimes is still the continued impunity of its criminals, especially its government officials and settler gangs, for crimes fueled by blind extremism, acts of aggression and terrorism that threaten the peace and security in the region. How not to have such situation while we are facing states led by the United States of America practice blatant hypocrisy that puts the occupying power above international law? Finally, we stress the need to address the end of the systematic policy of the occupying power aiming at obstructing and undermining the work of the mechanisms concerned with the situation in the occupied Palestinian territories. I thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. I give the floor to Indonesia. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The Commission's recommendation in its report applied to all duty bearers. However, it is essential to note that the State of Palestine authority and ability as a duty bearer is limited due to Israeli occupation since 1967. The ongoing occupation is a clear violation of international law and hampers the fulfillment of fundamental rights for Palestinians. We condemn the attacks on civic space in the OPT, East Jerusalem and Israel, including silencing civil society and media through criminalization, detention and arbitrary arrests. Funding requirements that create access barriers for Palestinian CSOs remain a concern. Indonesia also regrets that systemic suppression, including attempts to erase Palestinian cultural, arts, and historical identities, such as the proposed bill to divide Al-Aqsa Mosque, continues to occur. Indonesia fully supports the COI's mandate to investigate all alleged human rights violations to ensure accountability and justice for those under occupation. We appreciate the Commission's plan to report extensively on the killing of Shirin Abu Ahle. We urge continued support for updates on the database of companies that conducted business with Israeli settlements. Finally, we strongly urge Israel to protect the rights of freedom of association, expression, opinion, and peaceful assembly for all who advocate against and oppose the permanent occupation, including human rights defenders and journalists. I thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Venezuela. Ambassador? Thank you, Vice President. Venezuela supports the special session and the resolution that established the International Commission of Inquiry, given the massacres of Palestinians carried out by Israeli police and uh, law enforcement agencies. We condemn these. We also regret the total lack of cooperation between Israel and the Commission and the illegal settlements that have caused the forced evictions of uh, thousands of Palestinians. The Israeli bombings of the Palestinian people are crimes of war and a part of its policy to change the legal and geographical situation of the occupied Palestinian territories. The Commission re recounts the serious situation of people and human rights defenders of the Palestinian people, reducing their 
possibility for action and describing them as terrorists through questionable laws. The occupying power is using the commission to criminalize activism in the occupied territories and is also using deprivation of liberty as a generalized practice against these people dedicated to the protection of human rights for the Palestinian people. Venezuela will continue to denounce the colonial and apartheid policy used by Israeli that calls for terror against the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people and will continue calling for accountability for the crimes that are committed on a daily basis. Thank you very much. Gracias. Tiene la palabra. Thank you. And I'll call upon the Maldives ambassador. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The Maldives welcomes the comprehensive report by the Independent International Commission of Inquiry on OPT and thanks the Commission for their presentation today. We are deeply concerned by the Commission's finding that the silencing of civil society voices is intrinsically linked to the permanent occupation of Palestine at the expense of the rights of the Palestinian people. The international community must ensure that the human rights of the Palestinian people are respected and protected, including their rights to freedom of expression and opinion and their right to peaceful assembly. Madam Vice President, the government and the people of Maldives stand in solidarity with the government and the people of Palestine and assure our unwavering support for their legitimate and just struggle to achieve a free, independent and sovereign state of Palestine. A lasting, peaceful solution to the conflict can only be realized through a true state solution, with an independent and sovereign state of Palestine based on the pre-1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. I thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Brazil. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Brazil appreciates the report by the Commission of Inquiry on the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem and Israel and welcomes the efforts made to examine the human rights violations by all duty bearers, which attest the Commission's impartiality and neutrality towards all parts concerned. Brazil is worried with the reports of increasing delegitimization of civil society, violations of the rights of freedom of association, expression and opinion, the right to peaceful assembly, and the right to privacy by all actors. Brazil urges all duty bearers to seize immediately all practices that amount to violation of human rights and underlines that perpetrators must be held accountable. In the case of the Palestinian Authority, Brazil recalls its commitment to call general elections as ne a necessary step to reconcile the Palestinian society. The report points out that several actions by the Israeli government may amount to violations of international humanitarian law and may constitute crimes under international law and reinforces the occupation of the Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem. Brazil urges the Israeli government to reconsider all legislation and practice that obstruct the work of civil society, including legislation that may target human rights organizations as terrorists. Brazil reaffirms its long-standing commitment to the two-state solution with Palestine and Israel living side by side in peace and security within mutually agreed and internationally recognized borders. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to Malaysia. Mr. President, Malaysia aligns itself with the OIC statement. Malaysia reiterates its unwavering support and solidarity with the Palestinians for their self-determination, freedom and independence. It is outrageous that after more than seven decades, the Palestinian statehood is still being blatantly denied and conditions in the OPT continue to deteriorate as reported in the High Commissioner's annual report yesterday. We commend the COI for operating under challenging circumstances. We encourage the COI to investigate the underlying root causes of recurring tensions, instability and the protraction of the conflict in accordance with its mandate. Malaysia echoes the COI's call for Israel to urgently revoke the designation of Palestinian human rights and humanitarian organizations as terrorists or unlawful entities. Israel's action to silence dissent is just another example of its blatant disregard to international human rights and humanitarian law. Malaysia strongly condemns any act that further denies Palestinians 
against their fundamental human rights. Israeli policies that amount to apartheid contravenes the principles of equality, justice, and human dignity. In this regard, Malaysia firmly supports the COI's mandate and urges all states to fully cooperate with it. The COI must be provided with all necessary resources so that it could effectively discharge its mandate. The Human Rights Council must ensure that justice for the Palestinians prevails. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I now give the floor to South Africa. Ambassador. Thank you, Madam Vice President. South Africa thanks the Commission for its report, which bears testimony to the importance of its ongoing mandate. Of particular concern is the report's finding that the violations being undertaken to silence civil society, including the harassment, arrests, interrogations, arbitrary detentions, torture, and the inhuman and degrading treatment are being committed as part of Israel's goal of ensuring the country's permanent occupation at the expense of the rights of the Palestinian people. At the heart of this finding is the international community's continued failure to hold Israel accountable, which in turn has served to embolden the Israeli government's escalation in the perpetration of these widespread systemic and grave violations. It is for this reason that South Africa welcomes the UNGA resolution requesting for an advisory opinion from the ICJ relating to Israel's occupation of the Palestinian territory. Much like the contribution of the then ICJ advisory opinion to ending the illegal occupation of Namibia by apartheid South Africa, we are confident that this too will make an important contribution, providing the necessary legal clarity which would compel member states to act in support of the rights of Palestinian people in full compliance with international law. We owe this to the proud memory of the global icon Nelson Mandela who stated that the Palestinian cause is the greatest moral issue of our time. I thank you, Madam Vice President. Thank you. I give the floor to Ireland. Madam Vice, Pre Madam Vice President, Ireland aligns with the statement of, of the EU and thanks to the Commission for its report. It is of deep concern that the human rights situation in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory has continued to deteriorate. We welcome the focus of the report on the vitally important issue of civil society space. It's crucial to create and maintain a safe and enabling environment for civil society to operate, not to undermine its valuable work, and to support its contributions to building fairer and more peaceful societies and the pursuit of accountability. Ireland notes the, Commissioner's reference, the Commission's reference to the NGO taxation bill and welcomes the decision of the Israeli government not to proceed with this measure. Ireland is alarmed at the reduced space for civil society in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory. We support your call on Israel to revoke the designations against Palestinian civil society organizations as terrorist entities. We also note with concern restrictions placed on civil society actors by the Palestinian Authority. Ireland calls on all duty bearers to ensure that the rights of freedom of expression and association are respected and protected. Commissioners, what do you view as priority actions for the protection and promotion of women human rights defenders? Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to Egypt. Madam Vice President, uh, we welcome the members of uh, the COI and we thank them for the report. Uh, the report uh, has uh, approached the issue in a balanced manner uh, and from the lens of the Palestinian and Israeli sides. We uh, are concerned at the continued violations of uh, uh, human rights of the Palestinian people, including the uh, attacks and restrictions against the civil society. These attacks uh, and uh, harassments is only just one of the symptoms of the Israeli occupation that has gone on for decades. Uh, therefore, uh, the root causes of these violations need to be eradicated, including uh, the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories. The uh, settlement expansion should also uh, cease, as well as the 
discriminatory policies. We take this opportunity to stress the role of the civil society when it comes to raising awareness on the uh, rights of the Palestinian people and the negative implications of the um, occupation. Um, the civil society reminds everyone, including the occupying power, uh, of their uh, commitments uh, in line with the international uh, law and also provides assistance to those affected and builds bridges of peace. We continue our efforts to uh, stop the suffering of the Palestinian people and to guarantee their legitimate rights, including the right to self-determination in order to restore uh, peace and stability in the region within a comprehensive vision that works on the security and political and humanitarian levels at the same time. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Gracias. Tiene la palabra. Thank you. I give the floor now to the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Thank you, Madam Vice President. DPRK delegation aligned itself with a statement by Venezuela on behalf of the group of the countries to defend UN Charter, which we, my countries belong to. We also welcome the COI's report. My delegation is seriously concerned of the continued violation of human rights by Israel in the occupied Palestinian territory. The ruthless suppression of the peaceful protesters, this to use of force, the killing of innocent civilians, including women and children, the expansion of the settlement and ongoing blockade by Israel are in flagrant violation of international law and relevant resolution of UNGA and HRC, thus deserving strong international condemnation. Israel is again strongly urged to end all forms of human rights violation in the occupied Palestinian and other Arab territories and attempts for the annexation of Palestinian land in full in compliance with international law and the UN resolutions. My delegation reaffirms its support to and solidarity with the Palestinian government people in their just struggle to put an end to the occupation of the land of the state of Palestine and realize the legitimate right of the Palestinian people. I thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Turkey, you have the floor. Madam Vice President, Turkey continues to support the work of the Commission of Inquiry. The situation in the occupied Palestinian territories is not sustainable and continues to be destabilizing. The recent escalation of the incitements, provocative actions targeting Palestinians, including yesterday's incursion in Jenin, as well as the historical status quo of the Haram al Sharif, increases our concerns. All unilateral policies of illegal settlements, settler violence, violations of the historical and legal status of holy places, the blockade in Gaza must end. These actions curtail fundamental rights and freedoms of people of Palestine and are in complete contradiction with international law, in particular with the relevant UN resolutions. Turkey supports a sovereign and contiguous state of Palestine based on the pre-1967 lines with East Jerusalem as its capital, as an equal member of the international community on the basis of the established parameters of the United Nations. All members of the international community, the United Nations first and foremost, should respect the established parameters and take concrete steps to ensure compliance with the relevant United Nations Security Council resolutions, which foresee the system of settlement activities in the occupied territories and to prevent efforts to change the historical and legal status of Jerusalem and holy places. I thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Namibia, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Namibia thanks the members of the Commission for their detailed report, which draws special attention to the human rights violations against persons working for civil society organizations in the occupied Palestinian territory and Israel. Madam President, the occupier state, Israel, in blatant violation of international law and with a full impunity, continues to violate the human rights of persons working to promote respect for inalienable rights of the Palestinian people. These violations, which includes acts of violence and intimidation and the use of terrorism legislation to target individuals of all Palestinian civil society organizations, remain 
remind us of our own experience under a former apartheid regime before Namibia's independence in 1990. Having gone through a similar experience in the past, it is clear from the Namibian perspective that policies and practices of Israel in the OPT are aimed at prolonging its illegal occupation and to undermine the rights of the Palestinian people, including their right to self-determination. As states, we have an obligation to promote respect for the rights of Palestinian people by, amongst others, refraining from recognizing the illegal actions and by holding Israel accountable. Namibia therefore calls for the full implementation of the recommendations contained in the report of the Commission and for states to continue providing financial and other support to individuals and organizations working to promote Gracias. respect for the rights of the Palestinian people. Gracias, Embajadora. Thank you, Ambassador. Bangladesh, you have the floor. Vice President, we thank the Commission of Inquiry for presenting its report. We are concerned over attempts to undermine the COI's authority. We regret that Israel continues to deny cooperation with the UN mechanisms, including the COI. Bangladesh strongly condemns all illegal acts by Israel in the OPT, including the expansion of settlements. We deeply regret that the occupying power continues illegal policies and practices in flagrant violation of human rights. We believe that ending the occupation by Israel is essential for the realization of peace, stability, and development in the region. Madam Vice President, we are deeply alarmed about the continued culture of impunity enjoyed by the violators of international law. We underline that Israel must be held accountable. We strongly support the CUI's continued investigative work as mandated by the Council into the violation of international law by Israel. We call upon all states to fully cooperate with the CUI and ensure that it is provided with all necessary resources to discharge its mandate. Finally, we reaffirm our unwavering support to the Palestinian people's legitimate struggle for self-determination till the establishment of a sovereign state of Palestine based on the two-state solution and pre-1967 borders with East Jerusalem at its capital. I thank you. Gracias. Thank you. I give the floor to Oman. Madam President, we have uh, taken note of the report of uh, the COI uh, on the, the OPT, including uh, the East Jerusalem. We uh, condemn uh, the uh, blatant uh, violations uh, of the rights and the peace and security of the Palestinian people, including the systematic attacks against civil society and the repeated crackdown uh, and arrest uh, and arbitrary detention of uh, people, which are violations of international law. We call to putting an end um, uh, for uh, acts that are tantamount to war crimes, including the deportation of officials and also the violations of human rights. And um, we call also for revoking the designation of Palestinian human rights organizations and terrorist organizations, and we also uh, call for uh, stopping the targeting of uh, uh, journalists and uh, intimidating them. We condemn. Uh, we uh, sorry. We con we commend all efforts that uh, see, uh, seek uh, to stop these uh, uh, violations, and we uh, support Palestine's claim to full membership in the UN. We also reaffirm our support uh, to the Palestinian cause and to the uh, right of the Palestinian people to. Uh, um, uh, have sovereignty over the Palestinian territories, including East Jerusalem. We stress that a solution must be found for this conflict through ending the Israeli occupation that threatens peace and security in the Middle East and all over the world. Thank you, Madam President. Gracias. Thank you. China, you have the floor, Ambassador. Oh, thank you, Madam Vice President. China aligns itself with the statement made by Venezuela defending the UN Charter. We attach great importance to the report of the COI, as well as its concerns about the human rights situation in the occupied Palestinian territories. China always believes that the fundamental solution to the Palestinian... <laughs>
Bah ouais, bah c'est bien parce que tu peux nous garder les places. Ah, 
Ah, ah, ah, ah. 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 Ah, ah, ah
Monsieur le Président, Messieurs les ministres, Messieurs les ambassadeurs, Mesdames, Messieurs, Monsieur le Président, je suis ravi de vous accueillir, ainsi que votre épouse, pour euh, votre première visite en France, au moment où nous commémorons cette année le 70e anniversaire de l'armistice de la guerre de Corée. Alors que nous faisons face à, à une guerre d'un autre temps sur le continent européen, nous n'oublions pas cette guerre d'agression dont vous avez été la victime et à laquelle la communauté internationale était parvenue à apporter une réponse collective. La France y avait pris toute sa part avec l'envoi d'un bataillon français. Fort de cet engagement commun en faveur du droit international, 
Vous pouvez compter sur notre soutien pour agir résolument face à la crise nucléaire en Corée du Nord afin de parvenir à une dénucléarisation complète, vérifiable et irréversible du pays. Nous continuerons de dénoncer avec la même fermeté les violations flagrantes des droits de l'homme et votre récente élection au Conseil de sécurité des Nations unies, dont je tiens d'ailleurs à vous féliciter, nous donnera l'opportunité de nous coordonner étroitement sur ce sujet. Nos deux pays partagent aussi la même ambition d'un Indo-Pacifique libre et ouvert. Vous avez proposé une stratégie qui, je dois le dire, rejoint totalement nos objectifs et nos territoires d'outre-mer auront un rôle à jouer pour assurer ce lien. Et je me réjouis de la participation de la Nouvelle-Calédonie et de la Polynésie française au sommet que vous avez organisé il y a trois semaines avec les membres du Forum des îles du Pacifique. Alors que la France accueillera à la fin de cette semaine un sommet pour un nouveau pacte financier mondial, nos échanges auront aussi pour objectif de construire un agenda commun sur les grands sujets globaux et ainsi maintenir une ambition élevée en matière de transition écologique et énergétique tout en apportant une réponse aux attentes des pays en voie de développement. En tant que nation industrielle, nous avons, j'en suis convaincu, un potentiel inexploité de coopération dans de nombreux domaines. Nous allons aussi l'explorer ou le consolider. L'énergie, les batteries, les semi-conducteurs, l'intelligence artificielle, le nucléaire civil, l'espace, le secteur de la défense, l'aéronautique, etc. J'aurai l'occasion de rencontrer d'ailleurs demain les grands groupes de votre délégation pour présenter les efforts menés en vue de la réindustrialisation de la France, car pour nos deux pays, l'industrie est plus qu'une question économique, c'est un élément constitutif de notre identité. Je serai incomplet enfin sans mentionner les liens de plus en plus denses entre nos institutions culturelles et universitaires. À l'image du partenariat entre la Fondation Hanoi et le Centre Pompidou, il reflète une immense admiration pour votre pays, en particulier au sein de la jeunesse française. Nous avons pu le mesurer à plusieurs reprises, encore récemment, avec l'immense succès des groupes de K-pop à Paris. Nous allons travailler à créer la même ferveur à l'égard de la culture française en Corée. Je n'en doute pas, en tout cas, Monsieur le Président. Je n'ai parcouru là qu'une petite partie des sujets que nous allons évoquer ensemble. Je voulais vous redire le bonheur et la fierté que nous avons de vous recevoir à Paris, vous et votre délégation. Je vous remercie de cette visite importante et je vous cède maintenant la parole. Merci beaucoup, Président. Monsieur le Président, c'est un réel plaisir de vous revoir depuis notre rencontre en mai dernier à l'occasion du sommet du G7 à Hiroshima. Je tiens à vous exprimer ma sincère gratitude, Monsieur le Président, à vous et au peuple français pour l'accueil chaleureux qui m'a été réservé. La France est une amie de longue date de la Corée. La France est une véritable alliée qui n'a pas hésité à nous porter secours lorsque la paix et la liberté étaient en péril lors du déclenchement de la guerre de Corée le 25 juin 1950. La République de Corée n'oubliera jamais le noble sacrifice des 3421 soldats français qui ont combattu pour un pays, un peuple inconnu. C'est grâce à ces soutiens que la Corée a pu se relever et s'affirmer en tant que grande puissance économique, occupant désormais la sixième place du marché mondial des exportations et la huitième place de celui des importations. Elle est devenue le pays qui a créé le film Parasite et elle est la nation de la K-pop qui enflamme la jeunesse parisienne. Partageant les valeurs universelles telles que la liberté, les droits de l'homme et de l'état de droit, nos deux pays ont développé un partenariat étroit dans divers domaines. En dépit de la pandémie, l'année dernière a vu nos échanges commerciaux atteindre un niveau record sans précédent. Dans un monde où les incertitudes s'accroissent et face à la complexité des crises mondiales, nos deux pays devraient être leur coopération dans le domaine des industries de pointe et des futures industries stratégiques. Nous discuterons tout à l'heure des moyens de renforcer la coopération économique de manière tangible et d'accroître la stabilité et la résilience des chaînes d'approvisionnement. 
Nous envisageons également d'explorer des projets de coopération dans des secteurs stratégiques d'avenir tels que l'aérospatial et l'aéronautique, entre autres. La paix mondiale est menacée par la guerre en Ukraine. Vous avez été le premier leader européen à avoir pris l'initiative d'apporter votre soutien à l'Ukraine. La République de Corée coopérera étroitement avec la communauté internationale, y compris la France, pour apporter activement son soutien à la paix et au redressement de l'Ukraine. La République de Corée, en tant que pays responsable sur la scène internationale, contribuera à l'établissement d'une région indo-pacifique libre-pacifique et prospère. Dans le même temps, nous travaillerons en étroite collaboration avec la France, qui joue un rôle stratégique de premier plan au niveau européen pour la région du Pacifique. Les menaces nucléaires et balistiques de la Corée du Nord posent un défi majeur pour la paix mondiale, allant au-delà de la région de l'Asie du Nord-Est et de la péninsule coréenne. Face aux provocations illégales de la Corée du Nord en violation des résolutions des Nations Unies, la République de Corée, en tant que membre non permanent du Conseil de sécurité, répondra en étroite coopération avec la France, qui est membre permanent du Conseil. Je participe cet après-midi midi à l'Assemblée générale du BIE. La République de Corée s'est portée candidate pour accueillir l'exposition anniversaire en 2030 à Busan. Busan qui a connu un afflux massif de réfugiés lors de la guerre de Corée est devenu désormais la première ville portuaire de la Corée et le deuxième port de transport de la monde. L'exposition universelle à Busan, incarnant l'esprit de coopération et d'innovation du pays, se présentera comme une plateforme d'échange susceptible de générer de nouvelles opportunités d'affaires pour les entreprises en langue entier. Je demande à M. le Président ainsi qu'aux citoyens français de porter attention à notre candidature et de vous intéresser en toute amitié. Je suis persuadé que la réunion d'aujourd'hui sera l'occasion de renforcer encore davantage les relations de coopération entre nos deux pays. J'espère très prochainement avoir l'occasion de vous rencontrer, Monsieur le Président, en Corée. Je vous remercie.